Welcome to video number six. As you can see, we are recording from my office here outside of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Uh, we just had a big tropical storm come up the East Coast and anything that was not tied down in the yard ended up in the workshop. As you saw in the new intro that I did over the weekend, today we're going to be talking about so you want to have an open concept floor plan. And what this has to do with is having an existing residence and opening up the home by taking out a bearing wall and putting a beam in, whether that beam is flush or dropped. So these are things that territory managers and warehouser engineers are given all the time to work on for different customers. And what we usually end up with is a hand scribbled note. Maybe it's on a napkin, maybe it's on a notepad. Uh, sometimes we'll get pictures, uh, but however, most of the time we end up with a quick phone call or email that says, I need a 16 foot beam flush in the ceiling. Uh, there's nothing above it. Um, what can you give me? After a phone call back or an email back and we start digging into it, uh, we find out that there's an attic above um, and it's not a trust roof. So that uh, bearing wall is holding floor joists or it's a walk up attic. So we have to account for additional loading as opposed to a limited access attic. So let's get into what information territory managers are really looking for to size a beam as quickly as possible for a builder. So as you can see here, uh, so you want to do an open concept kitchen. Uh, we're going to take a look through what a builder would have sent in as a drawing. And if we had all the stars aligned, um, the additional information that would come along with that. So as I scroll through here, standard information that we're looking for is, of course, the name of the builder, the job name. Uh, we're always looking for a zip code just in case we have to attribute any snow load to roof members. Uh, we can look that up. And the main reason for having all of this information is archives so that if this job ever comes back up, we can easily find. Things that we're going to be looking for is how big is the opening. I said earlier that a builder said, oh, well, I need a 16 foot beam. Well, is that the total length of the beam or is that going to be the clear span of the beam, which the clear span is between the two bearing points. So if we were sitting on three and a half inch uh, columns on either end, that 16 foot beam now is really 16 foot seven. So there is going to be a difference between what we consider a clear span and what we consider Consider that out to out. Other important information is going to be, is it a flush beam up in the ceiling or is it going to be a dropped beam? If it's a flush beam and we're using multiply microlam LVL, is it weighted correctly on both sides or do we have differential loading, which is going to weight half of the beam uh, different than the other side? What this will give us is the information to know are nails going to be acceptable uh, or can we use structural screws that are gonna have to penetrate through all the plies to make sure that we're working as one cohesive unit. Um, we can get around that by specifying a parallel PSL or a single member. However, there may be times where there's just not the logistics to get that one member into the house and it has to go up in multiple pieces. The other information is what are we actually supporting? Do we have living space above? Is it going to be attic space? Is that accessible attic space? Uh, are there any walls upstairs that are contributing to the loads on those additional floor or ceiling joist members? What kind of roof members are we looking at if they come into play? A structurally built roof out of stick frame material or a compression roof that's been stick framed? Or are we looking at a truss roof? Other things that we're going to need to know are the length of that material that that new beam is going to be supporting. And what we're gonna be looking for is the distance from that supporting member all the way out to the new beam. An optional sketch is always good. Um, it doesn't necessarily always look as nice and neat as this, but this is getting us to the point. You can see that we're working on a first floor. There's an existing kitchen. Um, they're looking to remove a bearing wall to open up that kitchen into whatever that room is up front. We can see that we have two by four exterior walls. Uh, they have a new post. So we're gonna need a 16 foot beam. Ceiling joists front to back are running 10 feet. So when we add all that up, just cross-referencing, we can see that we have 20 feet of uh, length overall. And they've noted that this is limited storage above. There is a note that's down here that got cut off that says a three and a half by nine and a quarter PSL would I 
be ideal because they're looking to keep that beam flush with the two by tens on top. Once we receive this information, we're going to plug all of that into our Forte web software, which we saw in an earlier uh, presentation. And I'm not going to run through all of that, but what we're going to take a look at is just the report at the end. So unfortunately, in order to get that nine and a quarter depth that was flush, we would have had to move to a three piece inch and three quarter microlam LVL. And what that does is that gives us now a five and a quarter inch beam uh, for bearing. And as we saw in the drawing, we have a three and a half inch wall. So the post that's going to be under this is going to be standing proud of that three and a half inch wall. Maybe that's going to work. Maybe we can talk, the builder can talk to the customer and say, hey, we'll do a decorative column around it. But the only other option that's going to work beyond that is moving to a single ply paralam, or we could do a multiply microlam LVL. But here we can get that three and a half inch, but we're gonna be changing that out for depth. We're gonna be moving to an 11 and seven eighths of an inch. So at this point, conversation can be had with the customer. And if we go back to the drawing, we can say, well, we can either have it be proud up into the floor system or up into those ceiling joists by uh, about two and three quarters of an inch, or it can hang down um, into the new rooms, that difference. Or what we could do is build that decorative post here and put a five and a quarter inch by nine and a quarter inch beam that would just bump out this area here. Uh, on the existing exterior wall, that five and a quarter, which would be running the um, front to back because we have the three and a half inch depth the other way. So what we're looking at supporting that bearing length, we would not need to bump out into the wall. So if there's kitchen cabinets wrapping around, we're not going to have any type of issues um, going on. So these are conversations that the builder can then have with the homeowner to discuss their best options and how they would like to proceed. What we have here is a Trust Joyce Warehouser uh, beam application form. And when I say application, it's just another way to collect information from the builder that gives us a way to cross-reference a drawing. Um, it's really great for if a customer knows what they're looking for and they're standing at the desk at the lumber yard, they could fill this right out. Um, you could collect that information, check everything off, put in your bearing lengths, put in the information, and even have in there the C drawing, and you can attach a drawing to it and send it right to us. Uh, again, drawings are worth a thousand words, but this is just more information that we can collect to make sure that we have everything appropriately put into the Forte web software. So when we go back or when we email this to you, um, it's all correct the first time around. If you have additional questions, you can reach out to your local territory manager or your local warehouser engineering team through the tech support hotline. I'm Steve Rodowski with Trust Choice Warehouser. As always, safety, we're gonna practice it, we're gonna preach it, and then we're gonna go do our job. Enjoy the rest of your day.